territory on West. There's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. <laughs> The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Wanted for murder. Wanted for murder. Clay Richards. Clay Richards. Age 31. 31. Height 6 feet. Eyes brown, hair red. Eyes brown, hair red. Hey, how'd you like me to print his picture on these notices? I got a woodcut. Well, let me show you. Ernie! Yep? That's your marshal a copy of that front page. Interviewing Clay's wife yesterday, I noticed a tintype on the mantle. Their wedding photograph. So, first thing you know, I snitched it. It's very thoughtful. Yeah, oh, I'll take it, Ernie. Here. And then I propped it up in front of me and carved me this woodcut. Ain't she prime? Ain't she just elegant? Real elegant. Good likeness, don't you think? Of course, he was seven or eight years younger with us in time. Yeah, right? it's a good likeness. Cuts his hair shorter. Now. Doesn't show what makes a law-abiding man like him try to rob a bank. Doesn't look like a man who murdered an old cashier and a Chinese cook who just happened to be there. Sure over it, though. But it's a good likeness. Yes, sir, it is. A picture like this sure dresses up the front page, don't it? Yeah, it's a little masterpiece, Mr. Hightower. A notable contribution to the culture of Dodge City. Well, thank you, Marshal. Does fetch the eye, don't it? I'm printing an extra 500 copies of the weekly, and I bet I sell them all. Too bad the cashier's shot went wild. If he'd managed to kill Clay or even wing him, why, I bet I could sell a thousand extra copies. We must be thankful for the blessings we do receive, Mr. Hightower. Oh, I am, Marshal, I am. Why, just before it happened yesterday afternoon, I didn't know what I was going to fill my columns with. And then, like manna from heaven, two murders and a bank robbery. Attempted bank robbery, Mr. Hightower. He turned and ran before he got his hands on so much as a dollar. Yes. Still, as you say, like manna. Dylan, I... I just I'm talking you... business. What is it, Chester? Well, it can wait, I guess, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, print Clay's picture on those notices, Mr. Hightower. Oh, where were we? Uh, eyes brown, hair red. Oh, yes. Also known as Red, Bricktop, and Sorrel. He uh, didn't answer to no other nicknames, did he? No, that's what they called him. All right, then in big letters, $400 reward. Dead or alive. And at the bottom, apply Matt Dillon, Marshal, Dodge City. Mm-hmm. And I print 200 copies. How soon can I send Chester over for him? This afternoon. Good morning, Mr. Hightower. Chester. Think those posters will do any good? Richards is probably over the line into Oklahoma or Colorado by now. That strawberry roan of his is the fastest in the county. He has no money. He panicked and ran out of the bank before he got a penny. I think he'll try to get help from his wife or brother or a friend the first chance he has. Maybe tonight. I say he's around here somewhere. I, uh... I'm sorry I turned on you like that, Chester. Why, that's all right, Mr. Dillon. Out all night with a posse, no sweet man's bound to get touchy. No, it's not that. It's, it's the, the way... It's the way people use a thing like this. The men riding posse last night, they enjoyed it as though they were hunting fox or possum. Hightower back there, he acts like it was a birthday treat, specially gotten up for him. Everybody finds a way to use it. What, what was it you wanted to tell me? Hmm? Oh, I, I got a kid, a, a little boy, locked up in the cell. Uh-huh. He run away from home, back in Cottonwood. Ed Slade turned him over to me when he come through on the stagecoach just now. Kid about 12 years old. Who's is he? Widow woman, Miss Bonnie. She runs a boarding house in Cottonwood. 
Ed says kid's always running away a little while, I guess. He flagged Ed for a ride on the road halfway between there and here. Soon as Ed seen him stand there with his bundle on his shoulder, he knowed what he was up to. So he told the kid he'd help him and then turn him over to us when he got here. All right, we'll send a telegram to the mother to come fetch him. Well, come on in, Chester, and shut the door. Mr. Dillon? You're letting in every horse fly in Kansas. Mr. Dillon, I think you better cancel the order for them notices. What? The Dutchman's coming up the street, and he's leading a strawberry roan, and Clay Richards is draped across his back. Like a sack of wheat across the saddle. Last time I saw him, two days ago. He was standing at the bar laughing his head off. A sack of wheat across the saddle. And followed by half the saloon bums and loafers in town. All right, Chester, make him keep back. All right, now stand back, you fellas. Come on, now, back. Stand back. Ziegler. How'd it happen, Ziegler? My goat, my old billy goat, he pushes open the fence last night and runs away. Forget your goat. What about Clay? Yeah, I, I tell you. This morning, I go to look for the goat. I walk here, there. From near the river, I see Clay. He sits there. I say, hello, Clay. The gate. You I'm dirty here. Dutchman. You know the dog? Clay was your best friend. He helped you buy your farm, so you kill him for your All right, all of you. Keep back, everybody. Kill Clay? Me? No, no. My brother, he was like... We was in the war together... Peter, listen. You kill him for the war. Not so. I kill nobody. Not not since Gettysburg. Clay is dead already when I find him. I don't even own a pistol. Ziegler, inside, quick. Yeah, yeah. Chester, give me a hand with Clay. All right, all of you. Listen. Shut up! I will not tolerate a disturbance. You know me. I got him, Chester. Take his leg. All right, kick the door shut. Marshal, I don't kill Clay. On this table, Chester. What'd you do with Clay's gun? His holster's empty. Gun? Clay's? I ain't got it. I don't even own one. Just to see if it slipped out. His we holster were... was empty coming up the street. First thing I noticed. Maybe it's over yeah. on the... Another customer? Why, oh, that's three in less than a day. Oh, bountiful harvest. My fees this month will keep me in luxury. In luxury. Doc, I uh, want to have an inquest as soon as possible. Well, as soon as I finish the autopsy. Shouldn't take long with the practice I've had this week. Huh? <laughs> no. Uh, late afternoon all right with you? I'll take him up to my office right now. Uh, no, thank you, Chester. I can carry him all by myself here. You just open the door there like a good fella. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, 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 yeah. Yeah, Marshal, tell the city fathers I'd like to make a deal when the corpses are as famous as this one. <laughs> Back in 53 in San Francisco, a fellow I knew earned a fortune, exhibiting the head of Joaquin Marietta. Tell them if they let me keep the remains... I'll do the autopsies for nothing. Shut the door, Chester. Ziegler, where is it you met Clay on the river? By the fort. This side, by the fort. Right out there, Chester, and see if you can find Clay's gun. Maybe he dropped it when he was shot. I did not shoot Clay. Sure. I did not. I had no reason to. I did not. I did not. Now, you listen to me. Maybe you think Dodge has got so big, I don't know about everything that goes on here. Well, if you do, you're wrong. If you think I don't know about the bank having an overdue mortgage on your farm, you're wrong. Four hundred dollars is reason enough for a struggling farmer like you. No. I could not do such a thing. I, I am a human being. To a peace officer, Ziegler, that's enough grounds for suspicion. But whether you did it or not... We decided it's your trial. In the meantime, you just stop yammering about it. Trial? Me? Even when I shoot somebody, I stand trial. If they find it's justifiable homicide, and they probably will, Clay being a wanted man, then they'll let you off. And if not... Please, I am permitted to go now. Go? Are you crazy? I farm this stock. I, I must look after it. You sit right down. You want to be lynched? You're trying to get yourself murdered? Have you forgotten about Clay's brother, Adam? Adam would not believe I shot him. What difference does it make whether he believes it or not? His brother's been killed. Everybody's looking to him to do something about it, and he knows it. 
You want me to guess where he is right this minute? He's in one of them saloons lapping up courage to come in here and ask me to give you to him for a present. You want to know who's with him? Ever loafer, ever bum, ever slob in town. Slapping him on the back and telling him what a shame it is. Taking him on to kill you so that they can have some excitement and some fun. Well, maybe you deserve killing, but it's my job to uphold the law, and I'm not letting you out of here. What? I tell you, you might about... spend your time trying to think up a better story. That is, if you intend to stay in this town. All right, now think back. Didn't Clay go for his gun before you shot him? I tell you, I didn't. If I'm not under arrest, you have no right to keep me here. I got to look after my farm. I go. All right, Chester, lock him up. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Come on now, Ziegler. Step out, Sonny. This cage is bespoke. Who's in there, Chester? Yeah, that little old runaway from Cottonwood. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Come over here, son. Come over here to me. I know who you are. <laughs> you do, do you? You bet. You're Matt Dillon. <laughs> I'm guilty. I knowed you right off. You just pointed out to me one day back home. Filler says you was the fastest gun thrower in Kansas. <laughs> Wyatt Earp wouldn't be awful interested to hear that, I'm afraid. Filler says you was faster than older. Faster than Wild Bill Hickok and Hay City and Bat Masterson or any of them. How many fellas have you killed? You don't keep score, son. It's something you try to forget. Not me. Someday I'll be famous like you, and for every filler I kill, I'll, I'll put a notch on my gun. People will see those notches, and they'll know they better not try Why'd it. you run away from home, bub? Don't you know your mother's likely to worry about oh, you? Oh, she won't worry. She's too busy working. You ain't gonna make me go back, are you? You wouldn't do that, would you? Well... Because it wouldn't stop me for long. I'd only run away again. Oh, where are you off to in such a sweat? Oh, Texas, California, Mexico. I can accomplish things there, not like living in old Cottonwood. If you let me go, someday when I'm famous, you can tell people you helped get me started. <laughs> well, well that's, that's a pretty strong inducement. Um, I'll have to think about it for a while. And uh, look, uh, while I'm making up my mind, I, I want you to give me your word. Word of a man who'll be famous someday that uh, he won't try to run away from me. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll... Have to have Chester lock you up again. Oh, I'll shake on that. Good, good. Now, Chester, I want you to go look for Clay's gun. Yes, Mr. Dillon. And uh, on the way, stop off and send that uh, telegram. You know? Hmm? Oh, that telegram. Uh, yes, Mr. Dillon. I'll Where's get that Ziegler? Right it's all right, Chester. Go ahead. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Where's that murdering dog? Oh, there you are, you... Not a single step further, Adam. I want him, Dylan. He murdered Clay, shot him down without giving him a chance. How do you know? Because Clay wouldn't have let anyone catch him off guard except a friend. A friend. And that Dylan give me that Dutchman. Try to take him. It's like that? It's like that. And it's true what the fellas say. You made a deal with the Dutchman to give him the reward and protect him if he'd kill Clay for you. That was the deal, was it? Yeah. The fellas say why I'd make such a deal? Dylan, it ain't no longer a secret around town that you and Francie warned each other. But Clay was in the way. You had him killed so you could get his wife. Do you deny it? No. No. It'll serve as well as any other crazy story to work you up. You think you're safe behind that star, don't you? Well, Clay had friends, lots of them. I'm coming back with them friends, and we'll get the Dutchman and you and anyone else who tries to stop us. All right, Adam. I'll be waiting. Yeah. You wait. I almost seen something pretty just then, didn't I, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, almost. About another... Find a whiskey ought to do it. Here's the second act of Gunsmoke.
son. You say something, Mr. Dillon? Uh, yeah, open my drawer in front of you there. You'll find a small bottle of oil in there. No, no, the one to the right there. Yeah, that's it. Now, bring a little brush, too, huh? Here it is. Thanks, bub. It's a right nice gun you have. Yeah, it's not bad, but a little stiff. Just a little stiff. Don't it have a trigger? i never seen no gun without a trigger before. Oh, you remove a trigger or uh, tie it back against a guard. And all you have to do is uh, thumb a hammer. Yeah, hey, like that. It's faster. <laughs> yeah, that's better now. Remove the trigger. I remember that. What in the world for? Oh, I remember everything you told me. About the Texas holster and the spring holster and the double roll and filing off the site. It's just me, Mr. Dillon. Oh, any luck, Chester? No, sir. Not any. I went to the store first and asked Mr. Denton what kind of ammunition Clay Richard used to buy, and he told me Clay had a double action 44. I scarred that riverbank a half mile each way from the ford and not a sign of it. Yeah. I got that telegram off. You know who ought to be here pretty soon. It's only seven, eight miles from. Is that fire in town? Funeral services for Mr. Grinnell, the cashier. So soon? It's awful hot weather. Yeah. Um, any of your guns need oiling, Chester? I don't think so. You sure? When Adam left, he said he'd be coming back with some friends. I know. I stopped at the Oliphagant just now to rinse out my mouth. Adam was there talking mighty ugly and mighty big. He's got a sizable following. Uh, when do you think? Any minute now, Mr. Dillon. It want me to take Bob out of here to one of the hotels, maybe? I want to see No, him. I think you'll be safer here, Chester, behind stone walls and dodging about the streets rubbernecking. You keep your head down, sonny, you hear? There's a... Matt! Matt, i got to talk to you. She ought to be in mourning. If she cared for Clay at all anymore, she ought to be in black. Matt! Oh, Lord, I find her more beautiful all the time. Matt! Have you heard what they're saying? What are they saying, Francie? That you and me... That... That you made Pete Ziegler kill him because of... I'm sorry that got back to you, Francie. It's all over, Dodge. Adam almost strangled me before they dragged him off. Francie, I didn't shoot Clay. Francie, I beg you, believe me. Now is the... Shut up, Ziegler. Pete, Shut up or I'll put you to death. Francie is just one of those crazy stories. They needed one and they made one up. But, Matt, everyone believes it. On my way down here, people were pointing, whispering... Old women clucking their tongues at me. They believe it. They'll forget it as soon as this is over. They'll remember that even if we once did go with each other, it was finished and done with even before the war ended, before you even met Clay. No, they won't forget it. For the rest of my life, as long as I stay here, oh, I'll... Hold it a minute, Francie. Yeah, Doc, what is it? Oh, uh, am I interrupted? What is it, Doc? Uh, our topsy's finished. I examined his liver and lights. His this story. is Mrs. Richards, Doc. Oh, oh, I beg your pardon, ma'am. I'm sure I have meant no disrespect for the departed. Well? Well, Clay was shot all right, but from the nature of the wound and the coagulation of the blood, I'd say it happened sometime yesterday. I'd say the cashier's bullet didn't go wild after all. How could a dead man gallop away? Well, the wound wasn't what killed Clay. The ball hit the rib case and bounced off. Twenty-two caliber it was. And what did kill him was the stab in the back. Right through the spine. Inflicted sometime this morning. Now, near as I can judge by a small blade, oh, two or three inches long. It could have been a Barlow knife. Thanks, Doc. Yeah, please accept my condolences, Mr. Richard. You call the inquest any time you're ready, Marshal. Chester, close the door. You see? You see, I didn't do it. I didn't shoot him. All I right, then you stabbed I... him, maybe. You said you never carried a gun. Look, Francie, go home and... Give matters a chance to simmer Matt, down. Matt, I'm going to ask you for something. Yeah? Turn Pete Ziegler out into the street. What? Francie, they're itching to get their hands on him. Let him have him. It'll prove that story's a lie, that you didn't make a deal with him. Please, Matt, I have to live here. Tell me, I have to live here. Matt? Matt, don't look at me like that. Go home, Francie. Go home or leave town or hang yourself or anything you like. Just go away. Matt. Away, right now. I 
How about me a bottle at the Alapagans, Mr. Dillon? Would you care for a drink? No. Mm, guess the funeral's over. There'll be others. Funny. No, I miss that bell. Awful quiet, ain't it? It's just what... Just about on schedule. Are you ready, Chester? Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. I use a shotgun if I were you. It's more effective when there's a mob to be dealt with. Oh, yes, sir. I aim to. Ziegler, and you too, son. If trouble starts, lie down flat on the floor and keep your head down all the time. Don't gawk to see what's happening. You understand me? Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. All right. Dillon! Dillon! Come out, Dillon! Chester, I want you to stand here in the doorway after I go out, where you can cover the back door and me at the same time. Yes, sir, Mr. Hill. All right, Chester. Open the door. Come on out. It's my duty to warn all of you that you're in the breach of the peace. I've sworn to uphold the law. I've killed men in order to do it, and I'm prepared to do so again. Give us a Dutchman, Dylan. I ask you to be sensible and to leave quietly. But if you refuse to listen to reason, if you insist upon being fools, if you've already decided to act like wolves instead of humans, then there's nothing I can say to make you change your minds. All right, you want Peter Ziegler? Well, he's not more than 20 feet behind me, so come on and get him, any of you. One at a time or all at once. Come on. Which one of you wants to die first? You? You? You, Adam? Well, what do you say, Adam? You let him here. Don't let this star on my coat stop you. Come on. There, I'm not wearing it now. Well, come on, draw, Adam, draw. You all right, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Get his gun. Man alive, I couldn't even see your hand move. Uh, uh, Marshal, oh, don't tell me. Don't tell Doc, me. Doc, you make one single funny remark and I'll knock you down. You just take him to your office and get to work. Well, I, I never do mean to offend, Marshal. In my line of work, well, bodies, they're just so much lumber. Make all the jokes about them you please, but not to me and not in my hearing. In my line of work, there's nothing humorous about death. Give him a hand, Chester. No, no, I can handle the marshal. Thank you. Thank you. Just the same. Can you direct me to the marshal's office? Uh, yes, ma'am, right here. I'm Marshal Dillon. Well, I left Cottonwood as soon as I got your telegram. I'm Miss Bonnie. Where's my boy? Oh, we have him, ma'am. Safe and sound. Here. Let me help you down. Thank you. It's that horse, Chester. Right this way, man. Oh, I'm so sorry he put you in all that trouble, Marshal. The truth of the matter is, he is a wild one, and no mistake. Takes after his father, one scrape after another. Uh, he was no trouble at all. I enjoy children. I like to have them around. Bob? Bob, your ma's here. Son? Chester, where's the boy? Did you let him slip past you? No, sir, Mr. Dillon. He never got past me. Look, the back door's open. He seen me and he hightailed it, the devil. <laughs> we'll round him up for you, ma'am. Don't worry. Oh, I don't know why I bother hauling him back. If he's run away once, he's run away a thousand times. This time he ran because I wouldn't buy him a gun. He wanted a real one. That boy's just gun crazy, I swear. I got him a nice ball and knife instead. Barlow knife. I reckon it didn't signify, and off he runs. Barlow knife? A kid. Chester finds that kid. Marshal, has he done something bad with it? I told him to use it careful. He promised he'd use Wait, it careful. No, no, never mind, Chester. He's got Clay's strawberry ruin. We'd never catch up to him. Oh, I try to bring him up right. I tell him to be good, but he don't listen. He just don't listen. Now, calm yourself, ma'am. Just calm yourself. Here's your little bundle, Mr. Dillon. What? Yeah, give it to me. That's pretty heavy. <laughs> Here, you're better at knots than I am. Open it, will you? From the moment he was born, he'd been nothing but tribulation to me. Now, please, ma'am. <laughs> What's he got in it, Chester? A shirt, stockings, piece of sausage, and this. 
44 double action. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. That's Clay's gun. Sonny didn't manage to keep it long, did he? Well, if he wants a gun that bad, he's bound to get hold of another one somewhere, somehow. Chester, call Mr. Hightower over. Hey! Hey, Mr. Hightower! Oh. Come on over. Mr. Dillon wants you. Marshal, could I have please a drink of water? What? Oh, Ziegler, I forgot all about you. Uh, Chester, where are the keys? Yeah, right there on the desk. Oh. Oh, there we are. It'll be safe for you to go home now. I, I can go back by the farm. Yeah, that's right. I'll send for you for the trial. Oh, Duncan Duncan should. Duncan should. Watch where you're going, you dumb. Excuse me. Yes, Marshal. Mr. Hightower, it appears that we can do business after all. Get some paper and a pencil. I want some notices printed. Fire away. Wanted for murder. Wanted for murder. Uh, what's the boy's name? Bonnie. William Bonney. William Bonney. William Bonney. Age 12. Height about five feet. Hair light, eyes blue. Mm-hmm. I don't suppose he's known by any other name. I oh, know. Everybody just called him Billy. Or the kid. Also known as Billy. The kid. <laughs> Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Walter Newman, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in tonight's cast were Don Diamond, Parley Bear, Harry Bartell, and Howard McNair, with Richard Beals, Paul Dubov, Georgia Ellis, and Mary Lansing. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in... Gun smoke. City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Smoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Marshal. Marshal Dillon. Over here, son. What's the trouble? Marshal. Why, that's Will Thompson's young and Mr. Dillon. What is it, kid? What's wrong? Dad. Mom. They burned our house. Got the fences. Four of them. My sister. Sister, they... They they rode in and shot... He's been shot. Hold that lamp down here, Chester. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. There. Blood all over the back of his shirt. Will Thompson, he's a homesteader, isn't he? That's right. Came to Dodge City about three months ago. Took up a section over on Mulberry Creek. Yeah. Mr. Dillon, you want me to go get the doctor? No. Boy doesn't need a doctor now. Mm-hmm.
is right, Mr. Dillon. It's still burning. Yeah, what's left of it is. Watch yourself now, Chester. Yes, sir. No sign of life, though. Whoever did it's probably long gone by now. Mm. No reason to hang around. Well, let's tie up here and look around on foot. Bring up your carbine, Chester. I got it, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, they even fired the corn crib. Now, why would anybody want to... What's there? What is it? It's a dog. Shot. A dog? When they even shoot the dogs, it's a... You see something? Yes, sir. It's Will Thompson. I think it's Will. What do you mean, you think it's Will? Scalped. You was Indians, Mr. Dillon. They couldn't have been Indians. Only tribe reported in 20 miles is the Kiowas, and they wouldn't do anything like this. They've been peaceful for years. Yeah, I don't know, but... Come on. Let's find out what happened to the rest of the family. Yeah. Besides Will and the boy who rode into town, there's Ms. Thompson and a daughter. Girl about 17, pretty as a picture. There's something lying over there by that cottonwood. Yeah, I see. Well, I guess we found Will's wife. Mm-mm. She's alive. Yeah, if you can call it that. Scott her on. Take a look for the daughter, Chester. Yes, Mr. Young. Uh, uh, it's all right, Miss Thompson. It's all right. All right. Mary. My, my daughter. They, they took her. They dragged her away. Dragged her away. Easy, man. Easy. I, I tried to stop them. I held on to one of them. Kicked me loose. And his, his spur came off. It's here, somewhere. It's on the ground, somewhere. On the ground. Yeah, I see it. But my daughter. I took her away. My baby. There now. My baby. There now. It's all right. We'll find her, ma'am. We'll find her and then. Miss Thompson? Well, you're better off, ma'am. Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Over here in the willows. I found her. All right, Chester. Seen her in Dodge, walking down Front Street. Pretty as a picture. Yeah. All right, let's ride. Branch first, and if Alisco Pete's not there, we'll try the other salon. I bet his boss is here. He's here every night. Yeah, I know. Follow me in, Chester. Just keep him off my back. I'll take care of the rest of it. Yes, sir. Good luck, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, thanks. Well, look who's here. 
Matt Dillon. How are you, Kitty? What brings you in, sweetie? Business or pleasure? It's not pleasure. Ah. Plenty of other men in Dodge, Kitty. Are them? They come in here, don't they? Sure. They come in. I talk to them and I drink with them. That's my job. You follow me, Matt? I follow you. I'm off at two every night. Kitty, have you seen Holisco tonight? No. He hasn't been in, Matt. Ben Rourke's sitting over there at a door table, though. Good, I'll talk to him. I'll see you, Kitty. Sure, Matt. Sure you will. Oh, I think I got a pretty good hand here myself. All right, boys, here's where money talks. I'm raising another hundred, and I'll stand pat. Ben? Huh? Well, it's the marshal himself. I'd like to talk to you, Ben. All right, Matt, talk. Not here. We'll go over there by the bar. I'm sorry. I'm busy. I got a pat hand and a cinch back. Maybe. This is official, Ben. Me? Ben and I want to talk to you. Now, come on. Take over my hand, Donnelly. I'll be right back. All right, Matt, let's have it. What do you want to talk about? One of your cowboys, Ben. Jalisco Pete. What about him? Know where he is? Around somewhere, I guess. Why? I'd like to know if he lost his spur recently. Tonight, in fact. It's pretty, ain't it? Mexican silver, needlepoint, raw, gold inlay. Pete's the only man I know in Dodge who's got a pair like this. All right, I'll see that Pete gets it. He'll appreciate your finding. I doubt that. I found it lying beside a woman he'd just kicked to death. Will Thompson and his whole family were wiped out a few hours ago by four night riders. You know anything about it? How would I know about it? Your boys call you King Rourke, don't they? Never heard of one of them pulling anything without being sure you'd back him up. Matt, are you claiming I was in on this? You're a cattle rancher, been an open range man. You boys all hate the homesteaders coming in with their plows and fences. Been a lot of fences cut by night riders. No, it's murder. You haven't named me yet, Matt. A couple of months ago, here in the Long Branch, I heard you say you'd get the homesteaders out of Ford County if you had to burn them out. Well, did you? Sometimes a man gets known as a fast gunslinger and it goes to his head. I asked you a question, Ben. Then he gets himself a tin star and goes around bothering people. Ben, if you're figuring to draw on me, don't. Why not, Matt? I've seen you in action. You're not fast enough. Now, I asked you a question. And maybe I don't feel like... What's going on in here? Nothing. Oh, there you are, Marshal. How are you, Colonel? <laughs> Marshal, what's this I hear about an Indian uprising? There's been none that I've heard about. Whole family massacre, the way I hear it, sir. Murdered and scalped. Scalped? Two of them were. So it was Indians. What game are you playing, Matt? Indians don't cut fences, Ben. That's a cattleman's trick. Scalping, too? Could have been an afterthought. It wasn't an Indian who lost that spur. Well, we'll soon find out about it. I'm riding into the Kiowa country with Troop C tonight. I hope you won't do that, Colonel Blake. You know the Kiowas are peaceable enough when you let them alone, but if you push them, they'll fight. True enough, Marshal. We can't let them get away with it. The Indians weren't responsible, Colonel. I got evidence to the contrary. Give me 24 hours and I'll prove it. Well, I certainly don't relish stirring up a tribal war, but... Just 24 hours. Well, all right. Ben, if you know where Jalisco is, you better turn him in. It'll save trouble. When any of my boys need discipline, I take care of it. Not this time. Other people are involved. Homesteaders. Squatting on a measly 320 acres apiece. Ruining the whole country. They got rights, Ben. Who says so? I do. Morning, Marshal. Good morning. Any luck, Chester? No, sir. I just stopped by the jail here to see if you'd found it. I wish I had. I'll head out again in a few minutes. Oh, this fellow's been waiting for you all morning, Mr. Dillon. Is that so? My name's Ezra Hawkins, Marshal. 
We ain't met for. I got a homestead up the river. It don't leave me much time to get to town. I see. Well, what can I do for you, Mr. Hawkins? Well, it's about what happened to the Thompson family last night. The other homesteaders sort of appointed me to speak for the whole bunch. All right. Speak. Well, we want to know what you aim to do about it, Mr. Dillon. I aim to get the killers. When? Mr. Hawkins, I've been up all night trying to get an answer to that question. If you've got any information to offer, fine. If you haven't, then... What's up, Chester? A trail herd hit town, I guess. Damn, pull up, boys. Look at that pretty sign, Dodge City Jail. Come on, let's decorate it. Let's go, Chester. Yes, sir. All right. Hold it there. Hold it. My, my. Jail was occupied, boys. You men just blow into town? You ain't talking to men, Sheriff. These are curly wolves from the first of far the roughest stuff as I've in the pan. And you're not talking to the Sheriff. I'm the U.S. Marshal. You the range boss? That's right. Dead Dudley. What about it? Dudley, we got a new law here against shooting off firearms inside the city limits. Yeah? You mean like this? <laughs> no, Dudley, I mean more like this. Now, come on down off that horse. Well, come down off it. Watch it, you gun. He's got a knife. Yeah, so I see. Well, nice work, Mr. Dillon. Drag him in and lock him up, Chester. Throw some water on him. Yes, sir. All right, curly wolves. Your boss is jailed and fined $50. You can get him out tomorrow morning. We got the money, Mr. Man. Hold him now. I said tomorrow. Now on the move. All of you. Get! You handle things right fine, Marshal, once you get started. Thanks, Hawkins. Only trouble is some of us homesteaders are getting kind of impatient. The cattle ranch has been treating us pretty bad for too long. The boys are all meeting at my place today. I reckon I can hold them back till tonight. You know what I mean, Marshal. Yeah. I saw it happen in Abilene, dirty and bloody. I'd hate to see it happen here. Sure, I know what you mean. Range war. Well, well I sure we can hold an inquest any time now. I'm all finished with the autopsy. All right, Doc. It goes pretty fast when you can line them that way, four in a row. Makes the job a lot easier. Yeah, I imagine. Doc, have you ever seen a range war? No. I hear there's one boo. There is. Plus Indian trouble. If I don't bring in Jalisco Pete before tonight and find out who his three partners were, you're going to have bodies lined up 20 in a row. Well, it should bring in a lot of fees. I could retire and buy myself a ranch. Sure, Doc. Oh, boy. Oh, that sounds like Chester, Marshal. Yeah, he's been scouting those thickets along the river bottom. Mr. Dillon, I've brought in Jalisco. Where is he, Chester? Outside, tied on my pack mule. Good. No, sir. I'm afraid it ain't so good. He's dead. Been shot in the back and scalped. <laughs> And now, with William Conrad starred as Matt Dillon, here's the second act of Gunsmoke. Just a second now, Marshal. Here, here, here it comes now. Ah, ah. Ah, there's the bullet. If it'll do you any good. 
It won't, Doc. Uh, the slugs I dig out of the bodies all look alike. Someday, though, they may figure a way to tell them apart. Maybe even tell which gun fired which bullet. Oh, no, not a chance of it, Marshal. Well, I guess that's all I can do for the late lamented. Oh, I see he's only wearing one spur. Yeah, I know. I got the mate to it here. That's what I wanted to talk to him about. Uh, it's too bad, Marshal. His talking days are over. Yeah, somebody made sure of that, all right. Then tried to cover the trail by scalping him. Well, I can tell you one thing. It wasn't done by Indians. That's my guess, too. I've seen how Indians do it. Down in the territory, up in the Dakotas. Slick and clean. Nothing like this. Why, I could do a better job with my eyes closed. Yeah, I bet you could. Well, I guess I'd better get ready for the rush. Looks like a showdown, Marshal. And I don't see any way that you can stop it. Neither do I. <laughs> Hiya, Kitty. Business again, Matt? Well, I was looking for Ben Rourke. He isn't here. He left about an hour ago. Some of his boys came after him. Matt, I... I waited for you last night. I worked, Kitty. All night? Yeah. There's a bad feeling in the air, Matt. What is it? What's going to happen? I wish I knew. They called all the soldiers from Sea Troop back to Fort Dodge this afternoon. I hear they're planning to move out tonight. I hope not. There's been a lot of homesteaders in here drinking today. That's unusual for them. What's going to happen, Matt? <laughs> the bloodiest mess you've ever seen. And I don't know any way of stopping it. If I'd only found Jalisco Pete before they killed him... Now I got nothing to go on. Jalisco came in here last night, late, after you'd gone. What? Huh? Well, why didn't you let me know? There wasn't time, Matt. He heard he was wanted and he left right away. His friends with him. Friends? What friends? Oh, I'd never seen him before. I think Pete had known him in the Pecos country. They're all pretty drunk. How many were with him, Kitty? Three, I guess. One of them was named Red Dudley. Red Dudley. And one called himself Tulsa Jim. He kept talking about the Circle Bar yeah, B brand. it might be, it might be. They could have ridden in last night ahead of the herd to look up Pete and then they... Oh, Marshal, say so you better come on outside here if you want to stop a lynching. Coming, Doc. Be careful, Matt. Be careful. What is it, Doc? Ben Rourke and some of the cattle ranchers. They caught themselves an Indian and they're going to string him up. I doubt it. Let us take care of this, Matt. We know what we're doing. I hope so, Ben. Who have you got here? One of the murdering skunks who wiped out the Thompsons. Any objections? I might work up some, Ben. What's your name, fella? He won't talk to you. He hasn't opened his mouth. Look, fella, as an Indian, you're a ward of the government. I'm a U.S. Marshal. I represent the government. I'm here to protect you. Now, what's your name? Keith Doxwa. Work hard. Good man. No kill. What makes them think you did? Say kill people. No kill. He pleads not guilty, Ben. Sure he does. And maybe he can explain why we caught him two miles from my ranch house. Is that reservation? What was he doing there? Yeah. Mr. Rourke? Maybe I can tell you what he was doing. What? Ezra Hawkins. One side, if you don't mind. You let me through here, please. Let, let him stand. Thank you. We got tired of waiting, Marshal. We come on into town. Maybe that was a mistake, Hawkins. Maybe. You have to play it the way you see it. Look, mister, let's have it. What's this all about? I'm a homesteader, Mr. Rourke. Well, I accept your apology. <laughs> <laughs> it weren't no apology. I just wanted you to know who those hundred men across the street were. And they all got guns. A hundred, huh? Well, there's 30 of us, so the odds aren't bad. What's on your mind? This Indian's been working for us, Mr. Rourke. Tracking down fence cutters. Maybe that's why you caught him within two miles of your house. 
Got the nerve to come out and say what you mean, homesteader? You bet I have, fence cutter. All right, hold it. Now, you're covered, Ben, and you too, Hawkins. This play's gone far enough. Not giving a man a chance to draw, Matt? Not this time, Ben. All right, Katoxa, climb off that horse and get over here behind me. Move slow and stay out of the line of fire. You men, if either side makes a move, Ben and Hawkins will be the first to get it. You understand? Doc, take us in into your office. Oh, sure, sure. Right away, man. Well, Matt, what's the next step? You can't keep us here with our hands in the air forever. I don't intend to. I got one of the murderers locked up in jail. I want you two to come along and listen to his statement, but leave the questions to me, all right? It's just fine with me, Marshal. It's your show, Matt. Good. Come on. Chester? Chester? Looks kind of deserted, Matt. He may have gone back to the cells to see. Chester? Move on, Joe. Ben Hawkins. What's the matter, Matt? Here, I'll get that gag off of him. You cut the ropes, Ben. Right. All right, Chester, here we go. Easy now. There. What happened, Chester? Oh, they slipped in and got the drop on me, Mr. Dillon. Took Red Dudley with him. There was two of them, not more than 20 minutes ago. Who were they? Did you know them? Nope. Circle Bar B boys, I think. They slugged me and thought I was out, but I heard them talking. They were all in with Pete on the Thompson killing. Yeah, I know. And they killed Pete, too. They was afraid you'd make him talk. The question now is, where are they? I know where. They are Kansas rooms. They are Kansas, huh? They planned to hole up there till it got dark. Maybe they've gone by now, though. Maybe not. Want some help, Matt? No, thanks, Ben. It's my job. Mine and Chester's. Come on, Chester. Let's go. The room and house is all dark, Mr. Dillon. That doesn't mean a thing. Watch the windows. That's you, Dillon? Drop behind that water trough here. Use your carbine. It's more accurate. Yes, sir. All right, Dudley. Come on out. You're under arrest. Come and get it. Fire at the flashes, Chester. That came from the side window, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, Tend to one. There's somebody behind the other corner. So... Yeah, there was. Break the front of the building, Chester. Yes, sir. I got one. He's hanging out the window. Yeah, it's two down. And Dylan, hold one... fire. I give up. All right, come on out. Be careful, Mr. Dillon. It may be a trick. It's up to him. Come on out, Dudley. Well, hurry it up. I'm coming. I got a, I got a bullet in my leg. I can't hurry very fast. You, you got me all wrong. Walk it, you... he's drawing. Ah! Wrong, Chester. He started to. See if you can find the doc and get him to help you pack these things over to the jail. Yes, sir. Right away, Mr. Dillon. Matt? Are you all right, Matt? Yeah. Yeah, I'm all right, Ben. Had a clean sweep, huh? Looks that way. Well, bullets are cheaper than rope. I guess so. Ben? You and your boys aren't murderers like Red Dudley, but this business of fence cutting can lead to a range war, too. Like it or not, Homesteading's here to stay. There's more of them coming in on every train. I know all that. Those cattlemen built this country, Matt. A few more years now, they'll have us fenced out of it. Times change, Ben. There's range still left out west, New Mexico, Arizona. Yes, I know. Some of us have been thinking about it. Matt, they'll fence you out, too, you know. Yeah, I guess they will. <laughs> well, when that time comes, I'll move on. If I'm still around. Farms and families. Next thing they'll do is set up courts and bring the law in here. Law's here now, Ben. In Dodge City, I'm the law. <laughs> Go!
Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was especially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in tonight's cast were Harry Bartell, Lou Krugman, and Georgia Ellis, with Jack Crucian, Barney Phillips, Vivi Janice, and Johnny McGovern. Parley Bear is Chester, and Howard McNair is Doc. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun Smoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Well, Chester? It's another one, Mr. Dillon. Laying near his wagon. The horse was still hitched and was grazing. Another stabbing? Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Two buffalo hunters found him early this morning on the road leading out to Cimarron Crossing. We just brought him back. Who was he? His name was Jones. Les Jones. Been in town a couple of days buying supplies and food. Where'd he come from? Well, some of the boys told me he's got a little farm on up the Arkansas piece. Got a wife, too. Poor little thing, they tell me. Yeah. You know anything more about him? He was at Tad Slade's saloon last night playing feral. Drunk? Oh, we'd had a belt or two, but not drunk. Did all right at the faro table. He must have had two three thousand dollars. Three thousand dollars and a widow woman on the Arkansas River. Big pardon, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, nothing, Chester. The money's gone, of course. Yes, sir. Ask Doc to come down when he can with you, Chester. Right. Doc, come down a minute. Mr. Dillon wants you. Come in. I'm coming. Did Jones have a gun on him, Chester? We found a sharp special in his spring wagon. Uh-huh. He wasn't carrying anything on. It's outside. you want to see it? Had it been fired? No, sir. Oh, well, good morning, Marshal. Want to see me? I want to ask you a question, Doc. <clears throat> yeah? There have been two stabbings in two months. Jones makes the third. You think the same person killed the other two? Well, there's no way to be sure, but from the position of the wound and the body, and from the angle of the knife thrust... I think the killer or killers use the same. Doc, answer. I just wanted a simple answer. Yes. I think the same person murdered all three men. Yeah. Any way of telling how long Jones has been dead? <laughs> well, I'm not a Pickerton man, but I'd say sometime after midnight. Between three or four in the morning, maybe. And I'd also say from the amount of bleeding. Okay, the... Doc. Chester? Yes, Mr. Dillon. Get my horse. I'm going to ride out to the Jones place. I figure Miss Jones will want to know. Howdy, bub. I live here. Where are you from? I'm from Dodge. Dodge? You two ride all the way from Dodge? Sure. Get down and I'll water your horse. All right. Yeah, here you are. What's your name, son? Alvin Jones. My dad is Les Jones. I, I guess you know him, huh? Yeah, sure. I guess most everybody knows him. Uh, your mother in the house? Are you going to stay for dinner? Well, I don't think so. Is she in the house? Yeah, she's there. Just go on up. Don't worry about your horse. <laughs> Thank you. Elvin, Elvin, stop that 
Jones. It's not Alvin, Miss Jones. Oh, I am sorry. I thought it was my son. My name is Dillon, Miss Jones. Marshal Dillon at Dodge. Come in, Marshal. Thank you, ma'am. You care for some buttermilk, or maybe out here men don't drink buttermilk like they do at home? <laughs> Thank you, but nothing for me. Uh, Miss Jones, I got some unpleasantness for you. Yes? It's about your husband. He's in trouble? I left Dodge four hours ago. I thought I should be the one to tell you. He's hurt bad. More than bad, Miss Jones. I pulled the saddle off your horse, mister. Macy's a good one. Well, thank you, son. Alvin, this is Marshal Dillon from Dodge. The Marshal? Uh, Alvin, your pa won't be home for a while, the Marshal says. Well, not for how long? Well, I... Well, not for how long, Ma? Uh, not for quite a time, son, so uh, you will have to run things a while longer. Makes I can take care of them all, right? Sure you can, Alvin. Uh, would you stay to eat? No, 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 no thank you, ma'am. I, I gotta get back to Dodge. Uh, Ms. Jones, could yes, I... Yes, Mr. Dillon. Talk to the boy, Ms. Jones. Explain it so he won't be bitter... Too many gunfighters got their start from a killing like you. I'll try, Mr. Dillon. I'll try. Good afternoon, man. And uh, make sure you got enough whiskey to finish your night this Thursday weather. Oh, we've got plenty, Mr. Slade. If no fight starts that... Oh, Mr. Slade. There's company coming. Marshal Dillon just walked in. Oh, set that bottle of rye up on the bar. Yes, sir. Howdy, Matt. Join me in a drink? Oh, thank you. I will. What kind of drive? Been traveling? <sighs> yeah, I've been up the river a bit to the Jones place. Jones? I'll tell his wife she's a widow. Oh, yeah. I heard about that. It's too bad. He was in here last night, wasn't he? Oh, yes. Matter of fact, he was. You wouldn't know anything about his being killed. What are you asking me, Dylan? Straight question. Are you saying I killed him? Just asked a question, Slate. I don't know anything. Someone knifed that man after he left here. He was taking a lot of money out of your place. You had a reason. I wasn't even here last night. My partner, Ben Ramirez, was running the place. Where were you? I was with his sister. All evening? Yeah. Still late enough. Where's Ben and his sister now? I don't know. Home, I guess. Well, I think I'll ride out and have a talk with him. And Slade. Yeah? If you have any big winners tonight, make sure they get home safe. Huh? <laughs> You cannot see me? No, I can't see you. Well, don't be mad at me. I'll come to where you are. You see? One side of the shadow, and here I am. What do you want? I'm looking for Ben Ramirez. He is not at home. Or his sister. <laughs> I am his sister. <laughs> What's the matter? You don't believe me? What? Well, Yes, I'm mum, but I thought... You that... thought I would be in the house? Why, when the night is so beautiful? You want to talk with me? I want to talk with your brother. But he's not here. So why not talk with me? My name's Matt Dillon. I, I'm Marshal with Dodge. I know. I've been wanting to meet you. Yeah, I've come on business. I like business. Talk with me. 
Last night, maybe after midnight, a man was killed on the river road. Killed? By a knife stabbed in the chest. Why do you tell me this? He was carrying $3,000 he won at Slade's. And so? Uh, Tab Slade told me he spent last evening with you. He came for dinner. He often does. He thinks he loves me. Uh, your brother, was he here? Tab Slade and Ben are in the saloon together. They're partners. They think at least one should be there all the time. Ben went down after we ate. Did Slade, uh... uh was he here long? Yes. He's my fiancé. So it's all that. Isn't this Marshall? Why, oh, that's your business, Miss Ramirez. My name is Evelita. You could call me Eve. Well, when do you expect your brother? I don't know what my brother does. He may be home soon. He may be late. I don't know. I seen you when I was in town, not Dylan. Yeah? I don't ride in often. Played such a fool. He and my brother don't like me to come to town. Well, Dodge is rough, Miss Romero. Always he has to protect me. <laughs> Men are such fools. But Matt Dillon is not so. I you wouldn't keep me out of town. Well, I, that's not my affair, Miss Romero. It'd be for your brother and Tab Slade to say. Tab Slade thinks we will marry, but we won't, because I don't love him. I don't love anybody, but I could. Maybe. Uh, Miss Ramirez, Don't you find me attractive? Well, well, yes, I'm... Oh, why don't you kiss me? Well, well, no, I didn't mean to... Dylan, I've got a gun pointed at the back of your head. Ben, I want to... Fooling with another man's fiancé isn't smart, Dylan. Ben, please. He's gone inside. All right. Aren't you going to say anything, Dylan? What do you want me to say, Ben? Well, by this time, most men will be crawling. You're a hard one, Dylan. I can't fight a man who's behind me in the dark with his gun drawn. There, is that better? You can see me now. It takes a small man to make love to another man's woman. You can't haze me into a draw. I'm not trying to. I don't want a gunfight. I just want to talk, Dylan. What are you calling it? I saw a sleigh just a few minutes after you left this place. He told me you were trying to tie us with a murder. I said he was wrong and came up here to get the straight of things. From what I saw a minute ago, he might have been right after all. You would like his woman, so it would be handy to have him out of the way. Is that the way you figure it, Ramirez? Yeah, that's the way I figure it. The only reason I came to your place was to talk to you. I want to find the killer, Mr. Jones, and thought you might be able to help. Well, you're not going to get any information sniffing around Eve. What's your plan, Ramirez? I'll give you some advice, Marshal. Tab Slade's been a good friend of me, and I'll help him protect anything that's his. Eve's his, so stay away. You're not going to find a killer while you're saying pretty things. Are you through? All right, then listen to me. You say Slade had nothing to do with those killings. I won't say he did because I don't know, but I'm going to find out who did it, and if it was Slade, I'll get him. Now do I ride back to town? Yeah, right back to Dodge, Marshal, and uh, between here and where your horse is tied, don't so much as twitch up finger. <laughs> I don't know whether you're a fool or a brave man, Ramirez, but just let me give you one bit of advice. Don't tie at the wrong brand. It's easy to do. Just walk away, Marshal. Your horse. And walk easy. Marshal. Yeah? If you find out who killed Jones, let me know. I'll do that, Ben. I sure will. (laughs) 
Mr. Dillon? Mr. Dillon? Uh, what? Who is it? it? It's Chester, Mr. Dillon. Oh, Chester? Oh, wait a minute. What time is it? Almost four in the morning, Mr. Dillon. Four? Yes, sir. I'm sorry to have to wake you, but you better get dressed and come right away. They've got Tab Slade. Slade? Who's got Slade? Some of the ranchers. They're going to lynch him right in front of his saloon. Well, go and try and hold him for a minute. I'll be right along. Yes, sir. Mr. Dillon's going to have every one of you up for trial. No reason for you to get hurt. All right, Chester, I'll take over. Marshal, we don't want to have trouble with you, but we're going to hang Tab Slade. Uh, Harrison, you're too smart a man to be the head of a mob like this, and I tell your men to break it up and go home. I'm sorry, Marshal, I can't do that. Slade killed another man tonight, and he's going to pay for it. All right, now listen to me, all of you. If Tab Slate killed a man tonight, I'm going to... He did. If you can prove Tab Slate killed a man tonight, I'll take him to jail and hold him there for trial. Marshal, Tab ain't going to be alive to stand trial. Do you know Slate killed anybody? If one of these men lays a hand on Tab Slate, I'll start shooting. There'll be a lot of men dead. How about you, Marshal? My feet get hurt, too. That's right, John. You could kill me, all right. Which of you is going to shoot first? And die first? Huh? Well, which one? Chester? Yes, sir. Go pull Slade off that horse. Cut the ropes and take a gag out of his mouth. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. And you men, don't anybody make a mistake. Don't you move a shadow. I just... All right, Slade, get down off there. All right, Chester. Now, you and Slade walk back to the far side of the street. Slow. Yes. The rest of you just stand where you are, looking right here at me. First man so much as moves his eyes will be in real trouble. We're across the street, Mr. Dillon. Good, Chester. Now, walk Slade down to the jail and put him in a cell for safekeeping. Now, Harrison, you and your boys head for home. And if you've got any sense at all, forget to tell your families what you were almost a party to. Now, good night, gentlemen. Chester, what happened tonight? A man named Olson, a rancher, was at Slade's place. Gambling? Yes, sir, and he did pretty fair. He left around midnight and was found about two hours later. He'd been stabbed. His money was gone. Uh, you talk with him? Yes, sir. He just mumbled about having tried to be friendly. He said that several times, Mr. Dillon. Just being friendly. And then he said, I fired a couple of times. I think it hit. You mean he hit whoever stabbed him? I think that's what he meant. Yeah. He say anything else? Nothing. Well, then that's not much help in just that. He can't tell us any more. And I'll talk with Slade and I'll bring him out. Huh? Yes, sir. Mr. Dillon wants you, please. Matt, Matt, you gotta believe me. I don't know anything about the killing. This one or any of the others. I don't have to believe anything, Slade. I'll find out. But I didn't do it, Matt. Why is everybody sure you did? Why are they so sure that they're trying to lynch you? Does a lynch mob have to be sure of anything? Slade, before you came here to Dodge, you were a gunfighter. You had a bad reputation. You were in with the Kansas Raiders, sure, that's too. Right. The Raiders were killers and thieves. Some were. Now, when a man with your background goes straight, he's always suspect. Matt, I didn't have anything to do with the killing. What about this partner of yours, this Ramirez? I met him in Kansas. Him and his sister, we joined up and came out here. So we'd make good a team. Where's Ramirez now? I don't know. Matt, please listen you to me. You're going to marry his me. sister? No. Yeah, Matt, I don't know. Why isn't Ramirez around now that you're in trouble? <laughs> please, maybe he doesn't know. I don't know. He'd know by now. The news is all over Dodge. Chester? Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon? Put Slade back in his cell, then load your shotgun and keep a close watch on it. Well, where are you going, Mr. Dillon? I'm going to take a ride out to the Ramirez place. I want to have a talk with Mr. Ben Ramirez and his sister, Eve.
Don't move. Just stay where you are, Ramirez. It's late for a social call, Dylan. Why? You're still dressed? I was just going to turn in. Last time we talked, you had a gun in my back. Now your gun's on your hip, and it'd be smart to keep it there. I'm not going to try a shootout with you, Dylan. I wouldn't chance it, especially in this lamplight. There'll be no reason for anyone to draw. I just want the answer to some questions. What questions? Where's Eve? What do you want her for? I ask you a question, Ramirez. I want an answer. Where's Eve? She's in bed. Where was she around three this morning? Here, I suppose, asleep. I think you better get her out here, Ramirez. What's so important about Eve? A man was killed this morning, and I think she might have done it. You know what you're saying? Yeah, I know. You're calling my sister a murderer. That's right. And if you're going for your gun, Ramirez, make sure you're ready to die. I told you before, I'm not a fool. But if I can trick you, I'll kill you. Don't try, Ramirez. Why do you say my sister killed a man? No hand around these parts would stop for anyone on the road at night. Not unless it was someone they knew or someone they didn't have to fear, like a woman. Like your sister. You don't know anything, Dylan. You're guessing wrong. I didn't know when I got here, but now I'm sure. What do you mean? The man who died tonight shot at and hit the person who stabbed him. There's no blood on you, but there's blood on the floor over there by the door. Blood that could have come from a gunshot wound. That doesn't prove anything. And there's blood on the table by you there. It's not blood, it's just a shadow from the lamp. <laughs> light. Does it hurt, Ramirez? I hurt inside. Bad? I won't be around for the trial. Did she do it, Ramirez? Did your sister kill those men? She's not my sister. She's my wife. Wife? Yeah, that's why she didn't marry Slate. She's in the other room. Hurt bad. Get a doctor for her. Ramirez? She's not good. But I don't love her. Uh, she's got a horse. grazing when I topped that slope. Matt, what are you going to do with me? Take you back to Dodge. Have you up for trial? There's no point. I wouldn't live long on horseback. I've bled too much already. Yeah. Is there anything I can do to make you more comfortable? No. Nothing. Eve, can you tell me why? Why you killed four men? For a very simple reason. I wanted the money they had. I wanted it very much. Matt, I've been thinking about my husband. Is he dead, Matt? Did you kill him? He went for his gun, Eve. I, I killed him. He was kind to me. I tried to love him, but I couldn't. I didn't love anything but money. Maybe mad I could have lost. Oh, I'm sorry for everything. Huh? Yeah. It's very lonely. Would you do something for me? 
sure. Would you hold my hand? Good. That's good. Very good. I'll just rest here a minute longer. Perhaps I can... She lay there, her dark hair framing her face, the spring grass crushed by her body, a red stain across her silk blouse. The morning sun warmed the soft wind that moved across the land. Later that day, Eve Ramirez and her husband were buried on the outskirts of Dodge City, not far from the banks of the Arkansas River. And later that night, Dodge City was alive with saddle bums, ranchers, Cattlemen searching the dark of the Kansas night for excitement and life. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Special music for tonight's story was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in our cast were Georgia Ellis, Hi Everback, and Jack Crucian, with Richard Beals, Ann Morrison, and Herb Ellis. Harley Bear is Chester, and Howard McNear is Doc. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in... Gun smoke. City and in the territory on West. There's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with the U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, the story of a man who moved with it, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Chester. Chester. Chester, where are you? Back here, Mr. Dillon. Well, come on out. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. As soon as I get my boots on. Your boots on? What are you doing? Sleeping? No, sir. Just washing my feet. <laughs> well, now, I hope you didn't have any plans for tonight. Uh, what did you want me to do, Mr. Dillon? Well, I want you to stay on Front Street for a few hours while I go up and have a toddy with Big Kate. But if you're going to oh, be busy... Oh, no, sir. Well... I haven't got anything to do. I'd be proud to stay here. <laughs> Just look at the dust in that street. Uh oh, Mr. Dillon. Huh? Looks like Major Randall from Fort Dodd crossing over here. Ah, open the door for him, Chester. <laughs> Major will like that. Come in, Major Randall. Come in, sir. Marshal Dillon. Hello, Major. Marshal, I want to talk to you about last Saturday's affair. Well, Saturday was a pretty lively day around here, Major. Which affair do you mean? You surprised me, Marshal. 
Two United States Army soldiers were murdered while driving a supply wagon from here to Fort Dodge. A government payroll was stolen, and you seem to have taken no interest in the matter. Well, now, Major, protecting the Army isn't exactly... The Army can protect right. itself, Marshal. That isn't the point at all. Well, if that's true, Major, how come there are only two soldiers carrying your payroll? you got plenty of men out there and plenty of guns. Where were they? On maneuvers. On maneuvers? In my command, Marshal, troops remain in garrison as little as possible. Well, then you were asking for trouble, Major, knowing that there was a payroll coming in. The arrival of the payroll was secret. Even the two men carrying it didn't know what it was. Well, the word must have got out somehow. It seems to me, Major, like somebody out at the fort must have told him. There are no traitors in my command, Sheriff. Uh, Major, I'm not a sheriff. You, you see, it's more Never like mind. That. Marshal, I demand to know what you intend doing about this crime. All right, I'll tell you, Major. Nothing. What? If I knew who did it, I'd make the arrest, but I don't, so there's nothing I can do. I see. Well, Marshal, I regard this crime as a demonstration of your inability to control these Dodge City ruffians, and therefore I shall do it myself. How's that, Major? If no arrests are made in this matter, I'll give these bad men of yours a taste of martial law. We'll see how they like that. I wouldn't try that, Major. These streets will be patrolled 24 hours. Now listen to me, Major. You don't know these men. Sure, there are some bad ones here, but most of them are just wild. Free and wild. But you run the army in here and they'll all fight. Hmm. Let them. You've been stationed at Fort Dodge two months now, haven't you, Major? How long you been out on the frontier? This is my first tour, thank heaven. Well, then I'd advise you to take it easy. You get to know the ways of this land. You may save your advice, Marshal. There'll be trouble, Major. Bad trouble. If necessary. Nonetheless, the army will take over within the week or before. If there are any more of these crimes committed against it. Good day, gentlemen. My. You think he'll do it, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, he made a mistake, and he's a hot-headed fool, Chester. You try it. Well, can't you stop him? I don't know. Well, I'll be at Big Kate's later on. You can find me there if you need me. All right, Mr. Dillon. Hey, Marshal, come here. What is it, Shiloh? There's talk of Dodge being run by the Army, Marshal. So? So I don't like it. I and most of the men around here got out back in 65. We've had all the Army we need. Yeah, I know. But maybe things will work out. And if they don't work out, which side are you fighting on, Dylan? Where do you stand? I'm hired to keep the peace, Shiloh, not to answer fool questions. You calling me a fool? Well, say it. No, you're drunk, Shiloh. You saying I'm drunk, Marshal? Is that it? All right, Shiloh, I'll show you how drunk you are. Now, when he comes around, tell him I took his gun. He can get it back in the morning. And if he objects to that, tell him to look me up and I'll throw him in jail. It's Matt, Kate. Well, come on in. Well, sit down, Matt. I'll fix your toddy. Thank you, Kate. You could thank me best for buying a drink at the bar downstairs once in a while. Well, why should I get better whiskey for free up here? <laughs> at least you're honest. Well, what's in the wind, Marshal Dillon? Would you just come up here because you're tired of sitting with your back to a wall? <laughs> you're right, Kate. It's the only place in Dodge where I can relax. That's probably just because you don't consider me worth killing. Uh, how old am I, Matt? <coughs> what? You heard me. Well, uh, I never thought much about it, Kate. You sure didn't. What are you getting at, anyway? Just that if I was 20 years younger, you probably wouldn't come here at all. No? And <laughs> why? Here's your toddy. Forget it. <laughs> Anything you say, Kate. You know, Matt, you ought to get yourself a girl. Oh, no, Kate, don't say that. I mean that. it. Please. Sure, somebody like, we'll say Connie Dell. There's a real pretty girl. 
A lot of farts. Oh, too. you're sure a conniving old woman, Kate. You're just no good at all, you are. <laughs> you say worse than that. I told Connie she'd come up and have a drink with us the next time you show me. All right, Kate, if it pleases you. It does. Connie! Now there's fresh cigars in that box by your chair, Matt. Well, now. Uh, Had them brought in by the Santa Fe Railroad all the way from St. Louis. Evening, Miss Kate. Oh, come on in, Connie. I've corralled the marshal for you. Sit down, honey. I'll fix you a drink. Uh, don't let her talk bother you, Connie. Well, I, I did ask to meet you, Marshal. Oh? Why? Why'd you want to meet me? Hmm. Maybe just to see if you're really as cold and cruel as you seem downstairs. And? I can't tell yet. But I don't think you are. Yeah, a profession like mine leaves its mark on a man. There's always trouble of some kind, isn't there? Most always. Like this army business now. Yeah. Will it be bad, Marshal? Yeah, it could be. Well, I'll figure it this way, Matt. The major's in trouble and he's trying to cover it up by threatening to take over Dodge. Well, any more difficulties and he will do it. Blasted green one. Uh, say, Connie, your corporal been in? He left a while ago. Well, what's he say? How do the soldiers feel about all this? Well, I don't think they want to mix it with all these gunmen and buffalo hunters and the like. Yeah. The Major will wish he were back on maneuvers if it starts. Maneuvers? So that's where they've all been. No wonder it's been so quiet. But that corporal of yours, Connie, how come he didn't go out? He's not my corporal, Miss Kate. He's, he's just a lonely kid. <laughs> all right. Seems like he spends more time here than at the fort. How's he manage that? Oh, they made him a clerk, a sort of bookkeeper. This time's pretty much his own. Uh-huh. Well, he's lucky. He's got a good, safe job, too. I suppose it is. Well, I- I'd better get back. Now that we've met, Marshal, you might stop and buy me a drink next time you're I'm afraid not, Connie. No? <laughs> you're too distracting. I might get careless and shot at. I take that as a compliment, Marshal. It is. Good night, Marshal. Thanks, Mr. Kate. Don't you mention it, honey. Well, Matt? You said her name's Connie Dell, Kate. Where's she from? I never ask the girls anything. <laughs> yeah, maybe, but you always find out. Now, come on, tell me. Hayes City, last. Uh-huh. Um, what's the name of this corporal who's been sniffing around? Bowers, Corporal Bowers. Oh, here, let me sweeten that toddy for you. All right. You put me in mind of a man I knew back in Wichita. Yeah? He was the slipperiest, side-wind, <laughs> and the stubbornest man I ever knew. Even Mr. Dillon? Everything quiet, Chester? Yes, sir. But it's like everybody's holding his juice for the army if it comes. It's quiet and mean, Mr. Dillon. That's it, just just quiet and mean. Yeah. All right, Chester, you can go to bed. I'll stay around for a little while longer. Yes, Mr. Dillon. Oh, uh, the first thing in the morning, I want you to go to the depot and have him send a message to the sheriff in Hayes City. That'd be Mr. Hickok? Yeah, ask Bill to send me all the information he can about a dance hall girl named Connie Dell. She left there about a month ago. Connie Dell. I'll do it, Mr. Dell. And uh, bring me the answer as soon as it comes in, huh? Well, we ought to have it by tomorrow evening. Yeah, I hope so. Well, good night, Chester. Good night, Mr. Dillon. Mr. Hightower down at the railroad depot, Mr. Dillon, he'd come in at 7 o'clock. Oh, good. Let me see it, Chester. Here. Uh, Connie Dell worked Golden Horn Bar here. Left about a month ago. A stranger and called Billy Grounds. Nothing against girl, but believe Grounds a wild one. Has anybody shot you yet? <laughs> Regards, Hickok. Um, what's up, Mr. Dillon? Well, I don't know, Chester. I don't quite know. Uh, look, you go over and ask Big Kate if she's heard anything about this Billy Grounds. All right, Mr. Marshal? Huh? 
What is it, Shiloh? I want you to smell my gun. Here. here. What? And go on, smell it. Yeah, all right. It hasn't been fired. What are you worried about? Well, uh, I've been talking a lot lately, and a, a man was just shot out behind the long branch. A soldier. Any witnesses to this? Well, who saw it? I, I, I just heard the shots. I want to know who killed this soldier. Well, maybe nobody did see it, Marshal. And maybe nobody cares much about it anyway. Just a soldier. <laughs> All right, you men, I'm going to tell you something. If I don't find who shot this man, the army will move in here for sure. Not the whole army, Marshal. They won't all move in. Why not? My shop's rifle can kill buffalo at 200 yards. I reckon it'll kill soldiers at three. <laughs> hey, let me through here. Let me through. Let me through here. Hello, Marshal. Well, what have we got this time? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Soldier. Yeah. Well, he needs an autopsy just like anybody else. That was the man that shot him. he get hurt, maybe? Take a good look, Doc. He isn't even armed. This isn't a shooting. This is a murder. Hey, you're right, Marshal. Oh, well, I'll get him up to my office. Here, now give me a hand, somebody. You may have a better day tomorrow, Doc, but I hope I can spoil it for you. I'm riding out to Fort Dodge right now. Well, Marshal, what brings you here? Trouble, Major. What sort of trouble? Murder. A soldier? Yeah. Who? I don't know. Some private. Why haven't I been informed of this? It just happened about an hour ago. In Dodge City, of course. In Dodge City. Have you arrested the murderer? Nobody saw it happen. I see. Well, Marshal, you leave me no choice. I shall have now, to... Now, hold it, Major. I didn't ride out here just to carry news for you. I want something from you. From me, Marshal? Yeah. I want you to keep all soldiers out of Dodge for the next 48 hours. Put it off limits. <laughs> That's not exactly what I had in mind, Marshal. But you're going to do it anyway. What? Now listen, Major. Dodge City's an armed camp. It's full of men who fought Indians, who fought the war between the states, and who fought each other ever since they could spit. They'll fight you next. They'll make you hate it. Marshal Dillon, I shall report your treasonable talk. Report what you like, but stay out of Dodge. Now, I'll make you a deal, Major. Give me 48 hours and I'll find your killers. You better take it. All right. But I want the criminals delivered here. Sure, Major. And I might have to kill them to get them here. Hello, Doc. You drinking up the profit you made off of that soldier? Uh, uh, oh, 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 hello, Marshal. <laughs> uh, uh, the uh, boy's name was Bone, according to the letter I found on him. Uh-huh. Anything else? Yes. Dug a couple of slugs out of him. It's a funny thing, Marshal. I haven't happened on lead like that since 65. What do you mean, Doc? Well, I'd swear that boy was shot with a... Calvary pistol. I'll see you later, Doc. And mind you, can't prove it. Not exactly, but I would swear. Come in. Hello, Kate. Did Jester see you? He did. Well? Matt, I get my information through the girl. Some of it's true. Some is bound to be just talk. I'll weed it out. Carney's been seen riding out at night toward the Arkansas down by Brandy Bend. What for? Well, I don't know. Could be this feller Billy Grounds. Yeah. His name's never been mentioned around here. My guess is he's never been in town. Anything else? One thing. Corporal Bowers and Connie went for a ride one night. When? Night before that payroll was robbed. Uh, figures. 
Where's Connie now? Over at the Longhorn, eating a steak. It's kind of late for supper, isn't it? She works late. Matt. Yeah. Next girl I steer you into, I'll pull her fangs first. <laughs> no, thank you, Kate. I like them better this way. <laughs> Evening, Connie. Well, this is a surprise, Marshal. May I sit down? Of course. Thank you. You sure Corporal Bowers won't mind? Don't be silly. Anyway, he's away at the fort. Huh? What time do you leave, Connie? I don't know. About seven, I think. Why? Anyone with him? Yeah, Private Bone. Marshal, you think Bowers shot him, is that it? You know any reason why he would, Connie? They were friends. They worked together in the bookkeeping office. I see. Tell me, Connie, Bowers say much about his job there? Or what he does and all? No, Marshal, he never talked about it. Handled expenses for supplies and the like? Figured out the payroll? I don't know. Bowers would be in a good spot to know when to expect the payroll money in, wouldn't he? Even when it was kept a secret? You'd have to ask him, Marshal. I don't know anything about the Army. But this isn't why you found me here, is it? <laughs> of course not, Connie. I'm, I'm sorry. Hey, you look real pretty tonight. Why, thank you, Marshal. You really mean it? Sure. Sure I do. I have to work late tonight, but I can get off tomorrow evening. Marshal, would you go for a ride with me? There'll be a moon. Where would we ride to, Connie? I don't know. Anywhere, maybe. Maybe along the Arkansas. Oh, I know. Let's let's ride down toward Brandy Bend. All right, okay. Connie. We we'll ride down to Brandy Bend. <laughs> Dressed up, Mr. Dillon. Are you going somewhere? Yeah, after supper I am, Chester. Got me an engagement. Going riding with Connie Dell in the moonlight along the river. Is she a nice girl, Mr. Dillon? All girls are nice, Chester. Some fall in with bad company, that's all. Yes, sir. Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Who'd this one fall in with? Me. Oh, now, Mr. Dillon, that's not so. Then who'd you think, Chester? Come on, tell me. Billy Grounds. You don't give me much credit for romance, Chester. No, sir. <laughs> well, don't look so worried about it. Yeah. I, I was thinking, would you like me to follow you tonight, Indian style? Uh, thanks, Chester, but it wouldn't help. You see, I'm riding into an ambush. It'll be over fast. Real fast. Well, all right, Mr. Dillon, if that's where you want it. That's the way it's got to be. Uh, and as soon as I leave, I want you to ride out to Fort Dodge and see the major. Yes, sir. Uh, what uh, about... Tell him to arrest Corporal Bowers for the murder of Private Bone. I think Bone found out where the leak about that payroll money came from, and Bowers had to shut him up. The major won't like that, will he? Well, tell him I'll prove it. And anyway, I think Bowers will confess fast enough when the time comes. When will that be, Mr. Dillon? When I get back to town with Billy Grounds. What about the girl? Well, it's like I told you, Chester. Nice girl. Bad company. You know, I had me a girl once. Huh? Well, well you never told me about that, Chester. What happened? It was over in Abilene. I gave her my money to go to St. Louis and buy some wedding clothes. She wanted that. So? Well, I don't know, Mr. Dillon. I guess she just liked it there in St. Louis. I'm going down the street, Chester. You better get started for the fort soon. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Uh, evening, Marshal. Uh, hello, Shiloh. 
I feel another drunk coming on, Marshal. Well, then check your guns back there with Chester. Well, what if the army comes tonight? I'll need my gun. And stay sober. Uh, but uh, if the army doesn't come, I'll have stayed sober for nothing. Every man's got his problem, Shiloh. But uh, if I see you drunk and wearing your gun, you'll wake up brokenhearted in jail tomorrow. Tonight I'm going to get drunk enough to draw on you, Marshal. That's so, Shiloh? Then some night you're going to die. Marshal? Oh, hello, Connie. I got off a little early. Shall we go now? Any time. I keep my horse at the National. I'll meet you at the edge of town. Oh? You ashamed to be seen with me? Oh, well, no, Marshal. But, well, you know how people talk. Sure, Connie. I'll wait for you just down the trail. I'll hurry. <laughs> Have we come pretty fast, Connie? You want to get on for a minute? I'm all right. All right. We'll let the horses blow a little and then move on, huh? You nervous, Connie? No. Why? Well, then sit down and relax. All right. Is this better? Yeah. Ah, sure is a nice night. Yeah, it's beautiful. You're not even looking at it, Connie. Is something on your mind? No, of course not. Why should there be? I don't know. You tell me. It, it's nothing, Marshal, really. Connie, let me ask you something. You ever see a man killed? What? Why'd you say that? Well, did you? Yes. Once in the saloon. Ah. Tell me. Do you have a fair chance? Yeah, he he even drew first. Then you never saw a man shot in the back. Or ambushed. What do you mean, Marshal? I think it sort of goes against your grain, Connie, the idea of a man being killed without a fair chance. I get it, Marshal. All right. Go ahead. Down by the river near Brandy Bend, Billy Grounds is waiting to shoot me in the back. Then why did you come, Marshal? It's my job. I suppose you know about everything. I think so. What are you going to do? Connie, unless I made a mistake about you, I I think you're going to let me have a fair chance at him. Somehow. Why should I? What does it mean to me? I don't know, Connie. I, I don't know. But you think about it. You think about it all the way to Brandy Bend. Now, come on. Let's ride. Make a nice camp down here. Plenty of wood. Get your own water right out of the Arkansas. Don't you think, Connie? A man could hide out for a long time down here. Marshal. He could be safe here, even while the army was trying to move into Dodge. A lot of men were being killed back there. It's peaceful here. Quiet. Marshal, I can't do it. Tell me, Connie. That that big cottonwood up ahead, uh, on the left. All right. Keep moving. When we get there, I'm going to ride fast. I'll hang on to the offside of my horse for cover. When I start, you turn around. Get back out of gunfire. Yeah, it sure is pretty down here, Connie. You know, maybe someday we can come down and go fishing, huh? That river's full of catfish. Did you ever get a catfish dinner? Oh, they can be mighty good when they're small. Back, Connie.
Connie. Connie. Yeah, he's dead, Connie. I'm all right, Marshal. I'm sorry about this, Connie. I'm sorry I had to do it. He killed your horse. I'll show you where his is. And the money. Then you can take me back to Dodge. To jail. All right, Connie. But you won't be in jail for long. You have my word. Not for long. Let's go, Marshal. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was especially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in tonight's cast were Michael Ann Barrett and Jeanette Nolan, with Harry Bartell and Don Diamond. Parley Bear is Chester, and Howard McNear is Doc. Join us again next week. As Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Smoke, starring William Conrad, the story of violence that moved west with young America, the story of a man who moved with it, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Howdy, Marshal. Hello, Mr. Biggs. Can I give you a hand? No, no. This is the last match. Here. Hey, wait till the flies get to these buffalo hides in the morning and be enough vultures overhead to keep the place in the shade for a week. <laughs> yeah. You know, you'll sure have your hands full by tomorrow night. Yeah, it looks that way. When these boys turn them hides into cash, they'll bite the corks out of every bottle in town. <laughs> and some of them look mean enough sober. Yeah. Well, you better bed down and get some sleep, Mr. Biggs. Uh, where are your boys? I don't know. Jeff had some trouble with the dry axle up near Pony Rock, and Boaz stopped to help him fix it, but they shouldn't be this long behind me. Well, if I see them, I'll tell them where to find you. You, you can tell Jeff, but Boaz ain't even going to hear you. Oh, why? What's the matter with him? Oh, he's riding higher than an eagle. You know that white buffalo you've been hearing about? The albino? Mm-hmm. Well, it's just Indian talk. Oh, you think so, huh? Well, if it is, Boaz sure shot himself a mighty scared buffalo. <laughs> White as borax. Uh, that ought to fetch a price. Hey! Anybody seen Marshal Dillon? Yeah, over, over here, Chester. You better saddle up, Mr. Dillon. What's the matter, Chester? The Indian trouble. Two men dead and a couple of wagons burned up out there. I found this. A war rattle. Made out of buffalo toes. Arapaho. Well, they haven't been making any trouble. Well, these did. I, I was topping a hill when I saw the wagons go up and fire. It was Indians, all right. I saw one ride off. That's 
Pawnee. I never heard of Arapahoes attacking at night. How far out, Chuck? Ten mile, maybe. Toward Pawnee Rock. Pawnee Rock? Marshal, my sons are coming from there. Easy, mister. There's lots of wagons in the church. <laughs> Marshal, I didn't see another wagon between here and Pawnee except the ones we had, but... The Indians killed my boys. There's only one way to make sure, Mr. Biggs. Saddle up and ride over to my office. I'll be with you as soon as I can get my horse. I cut back through those button willows over there when I spotted the wagons being fired. We must be close to it, then. Just over there. Right down yonder. See him? Yeah. I see him. We rode up and dismounted. The last glint of hope in Mr. Big's eyes died. His boys were there, all right. And it wasn't nice to see. Kill him. I'll get him, please. I'll murder every red skin in the territory. We gotta bring your sons in, Mr. Biggs. You know what the morning's gonna be like. You don't want to leave them out here. Now come on. Hey, look. Down there by the stream. Yeah, four of them. They're not saddle horses. Mr. Biggs. Mr. Biggs. Huh? You yeah. recognize those horses down there? I, yeah. I know them. Teams belong to Boaz and Jeff. Indians must cut them loose from the wagons before they fired them. Doesn't that seem curious to you, Chester? In what way, Mr. Dillon? Why didn't they take the horses with them? Yeah. What are you thinking, Marshal? No burned hides in those wagons. So they stole them. Yeah, they stole them. But Boaz and Jeff both have their rifles there beside them, and the horses are left behind, too. Horses and guns are the first things Indians would go for. What are you looking for, Mr. Dillon? Those buffalo hides weren't carried off without wagons. Yeah, here. Marks the two other wagons here, and they're fresh. I didn't see any other wagons, only these. Well, they'd finish and gone before you got here, Chester. Well, yeah, but I, I'd have caught up to any wagons on the trail to Dodge. Did you go by regular trail? Well, no, I... I figured the Indian I saw wasn't alone. I didn't want to get bushwhacked further on. You didn't see any Indian, Chester. But Mr. Dillon, just as plain No as... Indian would leave guns and horses. This job was done by white men. It didn't take anything that could be recognized or identified. You mean that somebody's in Dodge by now? With the hides my boys worked and sweated to get? I'm afraid so, Mr. Biggs. Now, well, there'll be more than 300 buffalo hunters there by morning. It could be any of them. We'll find the right ones. Oh, how? The albino. Whoever killed your sons will have that white buffalo hide. <laughs> It was almost sunup when we got back to town, and more wagons had jammed the main street lining up for the unloading barns. I rode down the line, looking them over one by one. Howdy, Marshal. Some of the men would take their money, drink it up, and drift away. A few would stay long enough to be buried on Boot Hill. Then suddenly a wagon driver up ahead pulled out a line. Oh, hey, hey, wait a minute, Jim. Hold it there. Take your hands on that key. I'll take my hands off since you get back to your place. Oh, I'm tired of waiting now. Let go of that bit, mister. Don't do that, stranger. Get your hand away from that gun. Well, now. No, there's any law around you. There is, so don't try making your own. You got no right grabbing my team. I got plenty right when he tries to horn in in front of me, Marshal. That's a lie, Marshal. He cut Never his mind. Blood. You both want to cool your heads out in jail? Now, what's your name? Tennessee is good enough. A lot of people from Tennessee coming into the territory. Most of them are pretty peaceful. That sounds like you're saying I'm not. 
You move pretty fast for that gun. Man can lose his temper. You lost yours four times according to the notches you've carved into that gun butt, but don't try for number five, not here. How about you? What do you call? Charlie Kell. Charlie Kell, huh? They ever call you Chuck? No. Heard of a Chuck Kell a couple of years back come from Kentucky. Not me. Man I heard about was a gunfighter, so he never wore gloves. See, you don't either. It's pretty rough on the hands. Thanks, Marshal. I'll make sure to take better care of him. Yeah, do that. I'll be around a while, Marshal. Maybe we can have another talk. Anytime. They'd need watching. But what I wanted now was a white buffalo hide. Searching the wagons wouldn't do. There wasn't time. And the search had let the killers know that something in the hides they'd stolen could be identified. The time to find out would be when the buyers checked them. I got Biggs and Chester to cover two of the unloading barns, and I covered the third one. And then finally, daylight came, and the haggling started. Son, you want to sell those hides? Better learn how to handle these skin and knife a little better. They're as good as any. And full of holes, they ain't. Give you four dollars a hide for the bunch. You gave that last call of eight. <laughs> He looked tougher than you. <laughs> six. I'll take six. Four. Take it or leave it. You think you can rob me, mister? What's your mouth for? Here, you... here, none of that. Let me go. Easy, son. Go. Let me have that gun just so you won't be tempted. There, that's better. Give me that. Give it back. You can pick it up at my office whenever you're ready to leave town. Yeah, you look like a city boy to me. Where are you from? St. Louis? None of your business. When something's got you beat, son, there's no shame to admitting it and going home. Sometimes that takes a real man. Don't tell me what to do. Why don't you watch your own job? Why don't you leave me alone, Marshal? I ain't got a white buffalo hide. What'd you say, boy? You heard me. What do you know about a white buffalo hide? What everybody else knows, that you're looking for one. Everybody in town knows it. How? Because the old man whose sons were bushwhacked all liquored up over at the other barn, shooting off his mouth. Don't go away mad, Marshal. <laughs> Mr. Biggs wasn't at the barn where I'd left him. I cut through an alley to Front Street and headed for the saloons. I never got to him. Mr. Dillon? Mr. Dillon? What's the matter, Chester? Old man Biggs. Where is he? I'm looking for him. Well, he... He was over by the barn I was watching. Drunk. Going through the wagon. Yeah, I know about that. I was trying to get him to go back to his own barn, but all of a sudden, he took off. For where? I don't know. But there was one wagon he was watching in particular. The driver walked away from it with a package of some kind. That white hide? It could have been. I don't know. But Big sure thought so. He lit out after the fellow with blood in his eye. Which way? Down there where the boy's been hitching the empty wagon. Well, let's go. Old boy's drunk enough to make trouble. He's liable to kill somebody. Or get killed. Too late, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. It came from there behind that row of wagons. You stay here, Chester. Be careful, Mr. Dillon. When I rounded the corner wagon, Mr. Biggs was sprawled across a wagon tongue, his eyes dead and open, staring at the ground. And standing over him was Tennessee, a smile on his face, and his gun extended to me butt first. Looks like I'm in the might of trouble, Marshal. He's dead, Tennessee. That's more than a might. Uh, you take my gun for a while. You mean until after you hang? Wasn't figuring it to be that serious. Not when a drunk follows me out here and throws down on me. If you're figuring on self-defense, forget it. Look at his gun. It isn't even caught. What's out of his holster, Marshal? That's enough. Law don't say I have to wait till he kills me. You'll have to make a jury believe that. No, you I... shouldn't have much trouble doing that, Marshal. What are you doing here, Mr. Kell? Oh, 
I just happened to follow Tennessee out here. Why? Well, you broke up our little argument in town. Thought I'd get him alone here. See if maybe he was still nursing a grudge he wanted to settle. But the old man beat me to it. Now, Tennessee here ain't exactly a friend of mine, as you know, but... I hate to see any man hang when he ain't guilty. Is that your personal verdict, Mr. Kill? That's right, Marshal. The old man threw down on him, and Tennessee had to kill him in self-defense. Chester. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon? Which one of them had the package? This one. This is the fellow the old man was after. All right, Tennessee, where is it? I don't know anything about a package. Look in the wagon, Chester. See anything? Nothing here. I reckon you can give my gun back to me now. All right, Tennessee. Here. Thanks. But if you decide to use it again while you're in Dodge or any place else in Kansas, I hope I'm there when you do. Well, now, don't you fret, Marshal. I'm sure you will be. Just before sundown, we buried old man Biggs and his two sons up on Boot Hill. By the time the service was over and I rode down, darkness had fallen. And everything was going full blast. The town was roaring. Seemed like a good man, old Biggs. He was, Chester. So are his boys. Yeah, but there are too many men like Tennessee and Cal coming in, Mr. Dillon. They won't last, Chester. They'll keep coming, but they won't last. They'll take a gun and go against a man, but they won't sweat. They won't take root and build. We still going to look for that hide? Yeah. Well, just what do you want me to do, Mr. Dillon? Tennessee and Cal will be in town, but their wagons are back there with the other empties. Ride back and look them over. Well, they might have had somebody carry that package off for them. It might be, but they don't seem like partners, Mr. Dillon. From what I heard, you stopped them from gunfighting. Took more than one man to kill the Biggs boys, and more than one man and more than one wagon to cart the hides in. Well, you mean they staged that trouble just for you? Just for me. After they heard I was looking for that white hide. Well, why do you figure that, Mr. Dillon? When gunfighters start for their guns, nothing stops them, Chester. They both started, but they both stopped. I reckon you better take a look through those wagons. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Uh, where will I meet you? I'll be checking the saloons. <laughs> One by one, I made the stops. The Long Branch, the Alafraganza, the Texas Trail. And one by one, they got quieter as I went in. As though each place was holding its breath, waiting for something to happen. The last place was a Mexican hangout. A long, dark walk. Hello, Marshal. Can't see me, can you, Marshal? No. No, I can't see you, son. Too bad. Because I got another gun. They sell them around here. And I ain't going back to St. Louis. You'll fire once, son, and if you don't kill me with that, and I'll kill you. I'll gamble on that, Marshal. He lurched from the shadows into the street, staggered, and fell. And then he rolled over on his back, and his eyes struggled for a minute like they were trying to 
remember something. And then he went blank. Well, he's right about one thing. He wasn't going back to St. Louis. Well, what do you know? The marshal's real handy with a gun. Stay out of this, Kel. But I may have something to talk over with you later. Meaning what? If you don't know it, then you got nothing to worry about. I've been hearing a lot about how fast you are with a gun, Dylan. Anything to it? I'm still alive. Yeah. This your hobby, shooting kids? He was old enough to try to kill me. I don't like it, Marshal. That's too bad, Mr. Kell. The Chuck Kell I heard about would have loved it. They said he'd killed two kids under 16, one of them his own brother. No, you didn't hear the whole story, Marshal. The Kell you heard about killed a Marshal, too. You made the bid, Mr. Kell. And you got a gun. Use it or I'll take it away from you. Come and get it. Anytime. Here it is. How you feeling, Mr. Dillon? I'm all right, Chester. Doc fixed your head. Wasn't much he could do for Kel, though. I hit him. If you didn't, he sure died for nothing. He was fast, all right. Boys say you made him look like a sleepy burrow. Never even cleared his holster. And my head says different. You didn't get that from Kel. What do you mean? Tennessee was up the street with a rifle. He creased you. Huh? Where is he now? I don't know, Mr. Dillon. He rode out of town before I could stop him. I was the only one who saw him. I was coming up street to find you. All right. Let's get out of here. Did you find anything in the wagons? No, sir. But I found Tennessee's wife. Wife? That's right, Mr. Dillon. In a small wagon next to his. He's a squaw man. His wife's an Indian girl. Well, let's find her. All right, Chester. Which way? Edge of town, Mr. Dillon. Well, let's go. You talked to the wife? Yes, sir. Found out Tennessee and Kell were friends, all right. They left her here night before last and arranged to meet her here today. She said they were driving empty wagons when they left her. Ask her what tribe she belonged to? Didn't have to ask, Mr. Dillon. I could tell by her beads. She's an Arapaho. She was there, all right. Crouched by the wheel of a wagon. Her face was bloody. And she stared into a small campfire, rocking back and forth without a sound. She wasn't beat up when I left her, Mr. Dillon. Where's your husband? He... gone. Gone where? He... gone. Tell me which way he went, and I'll bring him back to you. No. You... love man. Your husband had a white buffalo hide, didn't he? Tell me. No. Other man killed white buffalo. Then your husband took the hide away from him? Well, he buy. He buy hide. He didn't buy him. He killed two men to get him. He killed with Indian paint on his face. He left an Arapaho war rattle. He wants the blame to come to your people. If the white men think the Arapahoes are on the war path, the soldiers will come. No. Arapaho, peaceful. Where's the white hide? What'd your husband do with it? He tell me. Bury it. Where? Where's it buried? There. Back there. By tree. Go dig it up, Chester. 
and then stay with her till I get back. You going after him, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, as soon as she tells me which way. All right, Mr. Dillon. You're white man. No good. Now tell me which way he went. You let him go. He not come back. I can't let him go. If I do, the soldiers will come after your people. He beat you, and he ran away from you. Now he'll bring death to your tribe unless I get him. Where did he go? He... He arrived to... where moon sleep. I rode east. Tennessee had had about an hour's start, but I figured to make up most of that before sunrise. The prairie was open and flat except for an occasional roll. And the Arkansas River would keep him from cutting south. His best bet for a fresh horse would be Kinsley, and I rode hard for it. It was just turning daylight when I rode in. Well, howdy, Marshal. Morning. Good morning. Got a place I can water my horse. Throw off right there. Just let him loose. He'll find it. Thank you. Looks like you come a long way. Dodge. Now, the fella here just a few minutes ago been riding hard, too. He come from up Pawnee Way, though. Tall, dark, riding a vinegar roan? Yeah. That's right. You get a fresh horse here? I'd send my boy out to the corral to get one for him. He'll be back soon. You mean he's still here in town? Yeah. Asked about breakfast, so I sent him over to the Witter Hilliard's place. Uh, right over there, across the road. Thank you. I'll be back. Say, you after that fellow, Marshal? Understand your servant breakfast, ma'am. Why, sure thing, Marshal. Dylan! That's right. Give me a clear way out the door, or I'll kill you. Come by me, Tennessee. I'll come shooting. That's all right. But just be sure you get me this time. You hurt, ma'am? No, I... I'm all right, Marshal. He looks kind of dead. Yeah. Bad one, hmm? Yes, sir. Gunfighter. Thief. Killer. What's your name, Marshal? Dillon, ma'am. Matt Dillon. I, uh... I'm sorry about... Marshal. When my husband brought me out here 15 years ago, Indians burned this place down three times. I'm used to killing You want to carry him out? I'll go fix you that breakfast. Thank you, ma'am. It's a long ride back to Dodge. Gunsmoke, transcribed under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Joel Murcott, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in tonight's cast were Stan Waxman, John Daner, and Larry Dobkin, with Sam Edwards, Lillian Bayef, Tom Holland, and Mary Lansing. Parley Bayer is Chester. 
Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Thank <laughs> you.